Um, in our world today, we have become heavily dependent on our electronics and become a lar large users of electricity. Um, because of this, there's been a large call for our country to become more e environmentally friendly. Um, currently, 78% of our en um, energy comes from the burning of fossil fuels. And um, with, with how our country has been continuing to expand, there's no realistic way we could cut back our energy consumption. Um, as we expand our use of power, we are depleting our current sources and causing a great amount of waste for the, uh, to the environment. Um, and as, the, as the, pushes, the push to become more green continues, we need to push to get a dominant eco-friendly power source. The two current frontrunners are wind and solar power. While it's okay to use both, uh, we need to establish a dominant source to focus our effort on to expand and make it, make it better. Um, while they're both good sources, solar power is the smarter choice to focus on. Uh, with that being said, my main proposition is that solar power is a more effective source than wind power. Um, how are we proving this? by showing that solar power is more reliable, it is more cost effective, and it has a more prominent future. Solar power is more reliable for many reasons. As many of you know, sunlight is more is much more abundant than wind. Because of this, solar powers can be placed solar panels can be placed almost anywhere, including the top of houses, business buildings, or even out in the desert as solar farms. Um, wind fans can only be placed where in areas that have wind, um, mainly around mountains and areas like that. Um, according to Alt-E, a company that produces solar panels, the, pa the panels can last up to 25 years with very little maintenance and no operators. Wind towers, on the other hand, need quite a bit of maintenance because where they're placed tends to be nesting areas for birds and that can cause problems for the blades and can cause them to break. The second reason solar power is more effective is than wind is that it is more cost effective. While both have a one-time installation fee, the solar panels do not have many parts that need to be replaced or kept to keep them operating. Wind towers can stop working for any number of small reasons such as parts breaking or things getting caught in the gears. Solar panels rarely need parts to be replaced. Because the solar panels have a long lifetime, they can create more electricity and they have, therefore have a better operating cost. In a study done by uh, Detronics Limited, a company that studies renewable energy sources, original operating costs of a solar panel is $10.68 per kilowatt hour produced. But in 10 years, the cost will be, will be below one dollar for each kilowatt hour. The wind costs start around nine dollars an hour or a kilowatt hour and uh, decrease slower and eventually the um, machines need to be replaced and you have to pay for the new installation fee all over again. My final main point is that solar power has a more prominent feature. The technology used in most center solar panels is called photovoltaic. This is a process of turning sunlight directly into electricity. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, the technology in the photovoltaic panels have been doubling in efficiency almost every two years. The current efficiency rate of the panels is only 19% of solar energy converted to electricity. But with that small amount of uh, efficiency, solar panels help make up 18% of the world's energy. Um, think how much it could make up and reduce the use of fossil fuels if it was, on, if it was 30 or even 50 percent. While wind fans can become more reliable, they still depend on the wind, which is not always there. Um, as you can see, solar power is a more effective power source than wind because it is more reliable and has a more prominent future.
Right, David, the claim is very clear. You've got a good layout of what the supporting points are going to be. As you're signposting those points when you go to the, through the speech, you do a good job labeling them. I do think that there are a number of places where you give us assumptions without providing us any evidence to back up those assumptions. One of them, for instance, you repeat at the end about the consistency of solar energy being available versus uh, the infrequency of wind energy being available. And I never heard any uh, statistical comparison on the to uh, or any authority that suggests that that's likely to be the case. Uh, as far as I know, in essence, wind energy is a form of solar power since the um, wind moves as a consequence of changes in the temperature in the atmosphere. So it's obviously solar produced, but you know, you, since you're kind of setting up this dichotomy that one is um, more valuable or has greater utility than the other one, uh, then I think you need to develop that argument a little bit more. Uh, the best argument that you had was on cost issues because you had one study that showed what the uh, current costs are, the startup costs for each of them, and an explanation about how solar actually decreases in its long-term cost over a period of time in a much greater um, degree. Again, although at the end on the information on the wind energy, I think it was a little bit sketchy. Uh, that's the place I think that you are weakest in the argument. You've got a good structure here and you've got the argument laid out, but you need clearer evidence that shows the superiority of solar as ter in terms of efficiency or the amount of energy that it could produce. And then the other thing that you need to work on a little bit is the notion that they are uh, somehow mutually exclusive or that we have to choose between them. Um, my guess is that most energy plans, for instance, are not going to rely on one or the other, but it's a combination of those kinds of things. If we're talking about national energy plans, I doubt that it's going to be, oh, we're going to choose X over Y. They'll say, let's have X over here and Y over there. All right, thank you.